She's outspoken. She's not afraid to ask tough questions. She's not afraid to speak her mind. You've read her column. Maybe you're a fan on Facebook. No topic is off limits. Straight to the point. There's no chaser. You're now watching Straight Talk with Carla Zool. Welcome back to Straight Talk with Carla Zool. We're having a conversation right now with Linda Miser, who is a gay woman living in Bermuda. Now, Linda, before the break, you were talking about um, being outed and you had to find you. And so now you're an adult. Have some of your, can you convey some of your experiences that some of your other gay friends may have had that may not have been so pleasant? Well, I mean, I, my, my experience has been, you know, positive in that I, I think that people now see me for who I am mm -hmm. and they respect me for who I am because I remember when we were talking about doing this and I said to you, oh, well, Carla, why didn't you ask me? And you were like, you know, tell you the truth, I don't even see you as gay per uh, a gay person, mm -hmm. you know? And that for me is what it's about, that you should just see me as a person. You should just see me as a friend, you know, a uh, 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 unionist, somebody who is, is having an impact on, on society because that's all I want to be known as. But unfortunately, some of my other friends haven't had that experience. But, you know, I really can't speak to them in detail because it's a journey that everybody has to take by themselves. I don't out people. I don't believe in outing people, even though I've been tempted a time or two because there's this concept that there are only so many gay people and there are mm -hmm. only so many gay people in these organizations. Well, I mean, the reality is that there are probably more gay people or certainly bisexual people in this country than enough. Now, let's touch on bisexuality for a minute because I know as a heterosexual female, one of the most dangerous element of person is a bisexual male. Um, do you feel that bisexuals are a danger, for lack of a better word, to society? Well, I mean, I, I, I would be a hypocrite to say that I felt that because they, their experience is what they feel. If they feel attracted to both sex and they feel it innately, who am I to say that it's not possible? I guess what I mean is if they're not being honest, like you're honest, no one can say Linda tricked me into this gay relationship because Linda's always honest. But I'm talking about um, bisexuals who may be dishonest and not say I like men and women. Well, I don't like dishonest period regardless of their sexuality. Mm -hmm. and, and I think people that are dishonest, um, they're forced into dishonesty because they can't be who they are. And I think that's a lot for certainly gay and, and, and bisexual people is that they feel compelled to be there. So they're gonna get married because they want to continue to play the role because the society doesn't provide for them to be who they are because you continuously judge a person anybody's like that mm -hmm. even if you feel backed in a corner you know you might start to compromise because you want to fit in but dishonesty is is, is dishonesty and unfortunately um, from a, a health point of view, it, it could very well be very devastating if you have a person that is sleeping with, um, particularly men, sleeping with men um, behind closed doors and then going out and sleeping with women. But I, I would hope that it's gotten better over the years, mm -hmm. certainly as we've gotten more information about the, the health dangers. Now, to me, in the last 10 years, it seems like um, particularly the under, say, 30 demographic, you know who's gay. And of course, like any other time, you know who, you don't know who's gay, but it seems like the youth, the gay population in that under 30 demographic are really out there. What do you say? I mean, considering that when you were younger, you couldn't be as open as them, but they seem like they are just so proud to be who they are and without um, fear. Do you notice it as well? I hate them. I hate them because I wish that was me. I wish I was able to live like that at that age. I think it's the best thing ever. And, and I think it's because they are not afraid of the labels and the judgment of people because they're going to be who they are. And we've raised them to be that way. You know, we've raised up our children now to be who you want to be, be who you want to be. And that includes being gay. And they're like, well, if you don't like it, too bad. This is who I am. And they're forcing us as a society to look at them and, and either accept it and move on or not accept it and, and push back. 
But even if you're pushing back, they're not going to accept it anymore. And I think it's that generation that is doing that in every facet of life, not just with their sexuality. They're pushing back from politics, from religion, mm-hmm. and they're saying, listen, I'm going to make my own choices. And I love it, but secretly I hate them. <laughs> Now, let's talk about you on a personal level. You're in a relationship. Now, your girlfriend lives overseas. But I want to ask, is she your girlfriend? Because I do see a wedding ring. Are you married? She won't marry me. (laughs) (laughs) She won't marry me, but she just wants to tag me and make sure that everybody knows I'm off the market. She thinks I'm the biggest flirt, but I just think I love people. Well, let's talk about that, though. Um, If you were to get married, now, gay marriage is not legal here, but it is in the States. Would you consider, if she take you, would you get married? Um, I I probably wouldn't get married because I really want to be able to have the full benefits of being married. Mm -hmm. Like, how is it fair that, you know, I, I have to pay the same, I have to put everything out the same, and you have the same expectations of me as a married couple, but you want to stifle my rights. You want to stifle my rights through immigration. You want to stifle my rights through uh, my ability to get benefits and be on my partner's insurance. And, you know, and, and so for me, it's like, it's almost like a mockery. Like, why go through that process when I'm not going to have the benefits? Now, let's talk about in Bermuda. Um, when she visits, you guys are open about your relationship. Have you been met with the sideways glances and any disparaging comments or people just go about their business and accept you for who you are? Well, I mean, I probably get, we probably get a, a lot of looks because she's stunningly beautiful. I mean, I don't know how I got her yet. It must be my charming personality. <laughs> but um, So obviously we get a lot of attention. Mm-hmm. And to date it hasn't been particularly negative because I mean people just know who I am I'm not sort of the up in your face kind of person you know I'm just doing me I'm just trying to live my life the best I can be a good person you know I pay my taxes I do what every other Bermudian does and so I why shouldn't I have the benefits of a relationship now what about the recent amendments to the Human Rights Act what do you think that did for the gay community well I I think that it afforded us the protection that we needed because even though we say people are changing, there is still a large segment that is not changing. Mm -hmm. And those people have to be made to understand that it's not about gay rights, it's about human rights. It's about human rights Mm -hmm. because that's all I am. I'm a human being. You want to label me a different way. You put the label on me, you know. I never raised up and said, oh, I'm gay, I want to be different. You identified me as being different and you started to uh, segregate me and separate me from what I'm entitled to as a human being. So when you do that to a person, then laws come in and laws have to protect people from being abused. Now, Linda, we're coming towards the end of our show. Why did you uh, to be a guest for me? Well, I, t- I just think that nobody's going to be surprised, <laughs> you know. Um, I, I've never been, ever since I made the decision, uh, forced out or kicked out of the closet, ever since I came out, uh, you know, I just decided that I'm a, I'm a product of, of God's creation, and he's given me a lot of beautiful talents, and, and I just want to live my life, you know, I don't, I don't harm anybody, I'm not trying to be up in your business, you know, mm-hmm. I don't walk down the street and say, hey, look, there's a heterosexual. I wonder what she's doing tonight. I wonder who she's sleeping with. I wonder what's her religious preference. I wonder. I don't think all of that. I just say, hey, there's Carlo. Or there's that person. And I just want people to treat me the same way. I don't want them to look at me and identify me and label. I want to be judged on my actions. So what would you say to a young person or any person who is still struggling with coming out of the closet? What words of encouragement could you offer them? You know, there's an international campaign that's uh, it's entitled, It Gets Better. And, it, and it's, it's such a simple phrase, but it's so true. Initially, when, when you're going through all of that struggle, you feel like this is the end, you mm-hmm. know? And unfortunately, some people have gotten to the point where I got to and made the decision to follow through. I mean, there are people all around the world, even in Bermuda, who have killed themselves because they didn't want to deal with that inner pain anymore. And it's difficult. 
You know, it's worse than getting beaten. It's worse than getting kicked because it's something that you wake up with and you go sleep with and you have when nobody else is around. It's stealing your head and you're beating yourself down. And, and it gets better, you know, and it's not easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to come across like everything's great and hunky-dory with me. I still struggle. I still struggle with the religious aspect of it. I still struggle with um, how people are going to treat me initially. But at the end of the day, I'm a better person for it. I'm a, I'm a more honest person, I'm a more outgoing person. I've lived a fantastic life and I intend to continue to, to live a great life. Whether after this people hate me or don't hate me or don't speak to me, that's your choice. You live your journey and let me live my journey. Okay, and that pretty much sums it up. We've come to an end of our episode of Straight Talk with Carla Zool. Linda, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for coming and being here with us. See you next time. Okay, I'm going to do something right. Because people who know me, they say, oh, you talk too much. But some of you think you know me. And some of you will never know me. It's really that simple. But who am I? Well, let me give you a little background on me. I am a mother of three. An unmarried mother. And I am very dedicated to my three children. Love them, love them, love them to death. I am a hardworking woman. And I love journalism. I love all things communications. For my US friends, went to UGA, woo -hoo, class of 98. Um, have a degree in journalism, currently doing a master's in marketing, which has taken me forever, but I'm not gonna give up. Um, I have a passion. If I wasn't a journalist, I'd be a social worker. I love, love, love black men. Um, the plight of the young black man. I really think that our young black men really need to understand how viable they are to our community. And I won't waver from that ever. Um, I'm just very passionate about progress and empowerment. But I think that we as Bermudians need to work together more for a better Bermuda. TV, love TV. Jenny Jones, Sally Jesse Raphael, Montel Williams, that kind of tells you how old I am. Love these shows. Even brought red glasses when I was 12. Begged my mama so I could look like Sally Jesse Raphael. But well, isn't that funny? For more than one obvious reason. But um, I've loved all things journalism, love to read. And I said, you know what? I have a talent and I'm going to cultivate it. And I've been talking about this talk show now for about three to four years. And it wasn't until one day I hosted a lingerie show and we had a blast. And I was approached by my producer who was like, Carla, look, I really think you need to convert this talent that you have. And it, we've been talking for about a year and a half now and here we are today. Thanks for watching Straight Talk with Carla Zool.